Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are finally going to be making the famous TikTok heart granny square tote bag. I'm sure you've seen it. That was kind of the inspiration from my one video, the heart granny square video. But today we are going to actually be putting the squares together, making the straps, and turning it into an adorable little bag. Before we get started though, I just want to thank everyone for all the love on my channel recently. We just hit a big milestone of 1,000 subscribers, which is absolutely blowing my mind. Still can't comprehend that whatsoever. But thank you so much for all the likes, comments, and just all of the support on the channel. So as for the materials for this project, we are actually going to need to start out with 18 granny squares. So the front of my bag I am doing with the heart granny squares, but the back I just decided to do the basic ones since that's going to be facing my side when I'm carrying it. I figured why, you know, make it too complicated. So I do have separate videos for each of those if you want to see my tutorial on how to do the heart granny squares check out this link. If you want to see how to do the basic ones, check out this one. And I will go ahead and link those in the description as well. But other than that, you will simply need a crochet hook. I'm using a four millimeter and a yarn needle and scissors, and obviously some yarn for the strap in whatever color. But with that, you should be set. So let's jump right into it. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to crochet these straps, which from this video, this is the only new thing you're gonna be crocheting, obviously, but I've already made one of them. You are gonna to need to make two. So this is what it should look like when it's done. This is going to be about 25 inches long for the strap, which I did count to be 104 rounds of single crochet or rows, I guess. Which sounds like a lot, but it actually isn't, isn't too bad because you're only going to be working with uh, seven stitches wide. So let's go ahead and show you how to get started with one of these. Alright, so working with whatever color you would like based on what you've been doing so far. I'm going to be working with this color and I'm working with a four millimeter crochet hook. Something smaller is definitely more ideal because you want the straps to be pretty tight, I would say. Um, since they're gonna be kind of stretching to hold up your bag. So first of all, we're gonna start with a slip knot by wrapping the string over our finger two times like that. And then we're gonna take the first one and pull it over the second, and then pull that second one over the first and all the way over your finger like that. Then we're just gonna place that on our hook. And we're going to chain seven. Three. Four. five, six, and seven. Perfect. So for this first round now, we're going to turn our work this way, kind of, if that makes sense. And we're not gonna work into the first chain or the second one, but actually into the third. And the idea behind this is that this last chain is gonna serve as a single crochet for the second one here, like standing up like this, and then we're going to crochet in each of these. So maybe you'll see if I keep moving, but we're just going to go into the third chain and do a single crochet. So I'm going into both loops for this project, or for this strap, I guess. But just single crochets. So that's one. We're going to single crochet across, which should be another five, I guess. We've done two. So three more. Three. Four. First row is always so awkward because you're working in just the chains, but it'll get a lot smoother as you move past that. All right, so we have a little piece like this. So now we're going to move into the next row by chaining up one and we are again going to skip two stitches. 
which will be including the chain. So skipping the chain, skipping the first stitch in the row, we're going to go into this second one right here. So right here, and we're going to single crochet. Then we will simply single crochet across, but at any given time you should have six stitches across on the top, including that weird one at the end. You're always going to have a count of six, so you can kind of keep track of that and just check periodically as you're crocheting this really long rectangle here. And that's how you can kind of check yourself. We're working into this last stitch here. We'll have two rounds that look like this. So moving into round three, we're going to chain up one. Like I said, skip the chain and the first stitch, and we're going to work into the second one right here with a single crochet. And like I said, six, so our first chain does serve as like our first single crochet itself even though you know we're only doing five more single crochets in each row. That way five single crochets plus that chain on the end is six. And if you kind of are getting the idea here, we are just going to keep going as we are infinitely, or at least until we reach 25 inches 104 rounds if you don't, or rows if you uh, don't have a tape measure or a ruler on hand. But it's pretty, pretty long strap, so you can kind of zone out and just keep crocheting while watching a movie or listening to music, whatever you like. But as you can see, we're just gonna keep continuing as we are. So. Keep going until you get to the length, like we said, for something like this. And this is just the first part. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And uh, then we will have two straps, so obviously do this twice. Alright, so I just finished up the last row of this strap. So to end this off, we're just going to make sure to cut a pretty long tail for sewing the strap onto the bag itself. And then we will take the end of that and pull it through this to knot it off and pull tight. So there we have two straps. Alright, so let's talk about joining some of these squares. We're going to set up our 3x3. Three three. This is going to be the front of my bag. And in order to join these, I'm going to show you how we're going to just slip stitch along um, the length of these. So this one, I already did this row to kind of give you an idea of what we're, what we're going for. But you're going to do these in columns first. So you're going to slip stitch across this, across this, make a column. Same here, here, make a column. Oops. Here, here, make a column. And then we'll worry about sewing them together. So I do this little technique where we simply slip stitch across. And uh, this is what it looks like from the back. You don't even have to use the same color because it's really sneaky um, and you can't even tell the difference. So let me show you how to do that. So first, working with three squares, we're actually just going to take two of them for now. Set the other one aside here. And we are just going to need a hook and some yarn to join these together. I'm using a four millimeter hook right now so that we can try to make this, you know, pretty tightly joined. So a smaller hook would probably be ideal. All right, so we're going to take these two squares and if we think about it, we want to join them right along this edge here. So we would line them up with the hearts facing the right ways. And we're going to face, we're going to flip this top one downward so that they are facing, I guess, the good sides together. 
and then we're going to be looking at this top row here. So first, let's take our yarn end and we're going to make a slip knot. So wrap over the finger twice, first one over the second one, second one over the first one, all the way around your finger. Pull it tight and then coming back here, we are going to find the corner as best we can, like over here. We're going to try to line these up pretty well and we're going to go into one stitch from the top one, one stitch from the back square. So I'm going to grab this stitch right here that's kind of sitting on top and then I'm going to grab the one that it most lines up with, just like this. We have one stitch here, one stitch here, and then we're going to put the slip knot on our hook actually, tighten that a little bit, and then pull that through these two stitches. So now we are going to simply look to the next stitch and grab one from each again. So this is where we're going next. So I'm just going to grab this top stitch here and then grab the next stitch of the other square. And then we're just going to slip stitch. We're not going to single crochet, although you can if you like, but we are just going to keep going across like that. So grabbing the top stitch of this square, pull this guy out of the way, the top stitch of this square, slip knot, like this. Let me just go to the next one, and the whole one stitch from each idea is so that it leaves a kind of defined line on the squares themselves, like on the front of the squares, I guess. Um, and I'll show you in just a second what that means. So it's a little bit of a, a slow process but you kind of get into the swing of things after a minute. So feel free to take your time and uh, go back and retry if you need, but that's kind of what I mean, is how it leaves half of the stitch in the front, half of this stitch in the front, and we have this nice little line here. So we're just going to keep going across, put these back together, and just slip stitches. I think the only difference if you did single crochets instead is that gap that we see in the front would be a little bit bigger. But maybe you would like to do uh, single crochets if you think they'd be more sturdy. Just one from each stitch. Alright, so I'm going to stop here and cut off a bit of a tail. You don't need it too particularly long, I would say. Not like we're going to necessarily use this, we'll probably just uh, sew it off and hide the end later. But then we have something like this. This is what it looks like from the inside, at least. So when you open it, we have a nicely, cleanly joined to granny squares. All right, so now we just have to join that one more for this column. So just like last time, we're gonna line them up like this, make sure our hearts are facing the right way, and then we're gonna flip this one down. And again, we will find the corner here. First, let's make our little slip knot, just like this. Same as last time. And I kind of use this corner hole to be a, a reference for finding the, the right stitch to start in. But also if you just kind of line these two squares up and then uh, go into the two that seem most directly across from each other from that corner, you'll be pretty uh, pretty good. So now we'll just put this on our hook, 
tighten a little bit and pull through these two stitches finding the next one just the top of each stitch we'll start going with this same method here slowly but surely so i'm coming up to the end of this little stretch here and i was thinking you know obviously if you don't like crocheting these together you can certainly just stitch them, stitch them together with sewing like with a yarn needle i personally prefer crocheting them together just because i like crocheting better than sewing in general but whatever works for you so again we're going to since we reached the end here we're going to just cut this off and knot it over to secure our end and we have a column of them here as you can see things are looking pretty good so you're obviously going to make three of them or sew three columns together for the front and for the back so we're gonna have um, you know nine squares for the front nine for the back so make essentially six columns I guess and then I will show you how to go ahead and join the columns together surprise surprise it's gonna be the same technique as these but we're just crocheting the entire length of the column together so let's see how we will be doing that all right, so I have our three rows each joined together to themselves, I guess. So now I'm gonna show you how to do these two. So let's just take this third one away here and we're gonna take these two pieces. I'll put them sideways so you can see them better. Um, and we're going to, similarly to like we did before, flip this one like this so that our good sides are facing together. We're just doing it on a different angle, but this is that side that we want to connect. So now, I'm just going to hold your these pieces out of the way for now. You can go ahead and sew them in if you like. So I'm going to take my yarn here and make a slip knot, of course. And then we are again going to find our corner on the top right here since we crochet from right to left and let's get a better look here now we're going to use this gap here to figure out where to place our hook and i'm going to go in this one loop right here look across and find the matching one which should be this one and then you can kind of Hold it along to see that this matches up pretty well, and definitely does. So we'll now take our little loop here, tighten on our hook, and pull through these stitches. So then we will continue our slip stitching method across. You can go ahead and pull that extra little short tail in with this first one if you want to, to secure it a little bit better and uh, loop it through this chain just because otherwise this one is just kind of there so we will just continue on still grabbing the top half of uh, the stitch from each of the squares and just slip stitching. Like this. I'm gonna get you a better look in a second of the front, and anyways. But once you figure out how to just join two of the squares, I'm sure you can figure out how to join the whole bag. I just like to work in the columns and then join the columns together. I think it makes a little bit more sense in my head anyways. So I guess the only thing new slightly might be approaching this weird little corner we have, so there's nothing special to it. I just thought I would show you how I'm navigating that. 
you can kind of use this as a reference if your granny squares are lined up so far since we have this really nice line and they look to be matching up pretty well. So we'll just move right past it. No sweat. And keep going until we get to the end here. So I will keep going and then show you how I, how I end off this little stretch. The kind of unfortunate part about my situation was with this nice lilac color. Um, I ran out of it, I went back to the store to get more of it, and it was a discontinued yarn. So unfortunately, that is why I am joining this with a different color, but luckily we can do it invisibly because we are so smart and cool. So just make a... When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. What can I say? Alright, so we're almost done here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do one more single crochet. So, we'll just go into this one and this one to make the top of it as even as we can here. I'm going to cut my yarn through and tighten it off. So this is what our two rows look like or two columns look like when they're put together. Looking pretty good. So now we are almost done with the front of the bag. We're just going to connect this last column here the same way I just showed you. And uh, I'll meet you back when the front of the bag is done. Awesome, so now that we have all three columns attached, we are complete with the front panel of the bag here. So you're going to go ahead and repeat everything that we just did with your back panel. Now, obviously my back panel looks a little bit different just because I used solid um, granny squares. You can obviously use more hearts if you wanted, but I figured this one was going to be against my side anyways. Might as well just do solid, plus I ran out of this color, so it works out for me. So I already went and uh, connected all these squares. So we just have a little bit of a mess with the ends here, so let me show you how to weave one of these in, and since they're all kind of along these lines here, you can just weave them into these slip stitches themselves and then I'll let you go and uh, weave all of them in and we'll meet back to sew the bag together. But as for this demo, so we might take like one of these strands for example and you're gonna need your yarn needle to weave that end in. So in order to do that, we are simply going to weave this end through and if this knot has already been tied, then you can just go ahead and weave it in. If it's one of the ends that was a little bit more loose, then you can just go ahead and make a knot now by pulling partially through a stitch really close to it, but then actually pushing the needle through to form a knot. And then simply weave it in along here, maybe a couple times. like this. Nothing fancy. Pull it tight and it's pretty hidden. You can keep going if you want. A couple more for safe measure. But that's pretty good honestly. So you'll just cut off the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and suggest you do that for all of these yarns on the back here just to clean it up a little bit before we start putting everything together finally. Um, you can do it at the end if you'd like though. I would just prefer to, to clean it up now when it's really accessible before we've actually can, you know, attach these panels. Alright, we're back and as you can see I have 
cut off and weaved in most of these ends. So now we're going to be putting the front panel and the back panel together. So in order to do that, we're going to take our two good sides, or the front sides of each, which obviously this is the front, this is the front, as you can tell by these, how we stitched them together. And we're actually going to have the fronts facing together. So we're going to flip this one. This is the back, or the bad side. And we're going to face them together and line them up. I suppose you could pin them if you like, but I don't think it's entirely necessary. And then we are just going to start from this corner up here. I guess it doesn't particularly matter, but the idea is we're going to crochet along both sides and the bottom of the bag. So this is the top, then we'll flip it inside out, but we obviously don't want to crochet along this part because this is going to be the opening of the bag. So we're going to start here and we're going to be stitching these squares together with a similar technique as before. So we're just going to need some yarn and our hook again. So we are going to go ahead and insert our hook in the top corner of each of these. So I'll go maybe right here. Actually, yeah, I'd say right about here. And then we're going to find the stitch across from it. And the only difference between last time is there's two differences. First of all, we're going to be working into the full stitch rather than just one loop from each. We want to have both from each just so that we can really secure it. So we're going to take our yarn end here and make another slip knot. Should be pretty good at this by the end of this project. So then we're going to put it on our hook and this time we are going to actually pull it through these two stitches and maybe then we are going to chain up one like this and so that other difference as i was mentioning is going to be rather than um slip stitching across we're actually going to do single crochets this time so we're going to work our way into both stitches with the entire stitch on our loop from each square and we're going to single crochet like this. So I'll show you again. Into both. Entirely. You can kind of hold that, this one short end on the back here to weave it in as we go. But this way I feel like it, it feels a lot more secure doing these two small differences. By now we can go ahead and cut off the little tail, I would say, right here. So just definitely make sure you've got uh, the panels, the good sides of the panels facing each other though, because that's a very important detail. But nothing special. Other than this, we're just going to continue on as we are, go around crocheting, single crochets on all three sides, not the fourth. Um, and then once we get to the other end of the bag, we will stop and knot it off there. And then uh, we're getting very close to the end of the bag, so I'll let you go on your own. But Here's a little sneak peek of what this scene will look like, which is going to be the side of the bag. Um, looks pretty nice. So best of luck. This should go pretty quick, but I will meet you back when we're both done. All right. So that marks our last stitch here. So I'm going to Go ahead and maybe cut this end off finally and knot this off. We'll leave that in in a second, but 
let's see. So we have currently got something looking like this and it is connected on our three sides open on the top. So let's go ahead and flip it right side out. Awesome. So this is what it is looking like right side out so far. You can go ahead and kind of, when you have these corners laying flat, you can press it down a little bit to make it hold its shape. But it's looking very nice and clean so far. So the last step is going to be adding uh, the straps. So let me add one of them so that you can kind of get an idea as I'm explaining and then we'll do the other one together. All right, so here is one of the straps sewn on. And some important things to take note of is you wanna make sure the strap is straight, I guess, so that you can follow it along completely straight to the other side. So don't get it, you know, twisted up. And then as far as securing it really well, I actually put it down, you know, a couple inches like this so that it would be really secured in all these places. And then I just sewed like a box around the edges. So did it on both sides, still have some ends to weave in, but I figured I'd go ahead and show you how to do it with the back strap here. So we're gonna take our strap and take our end of it that I had left on there conveniently and weave it on the needle here. Then we're just gonna take one of the ends, preferably this one right here, and hold it on the edge of the bag about you know two inches down it doesn't have to be particularly exact here all right so just holding in place or you could obviously use pins to hold this strap down that might be a little bit easier but we're just going to take a few stitches from the bag and then a stitch kind of weave it through on the strap and just pull it tight it's kind of I find it difficult to explain how to, to sew on stuff in crochet because it's, I don't know, there's not really any particular right way as long as you're grabbing something from one piece, something from the other, then you can uh, get it done. Especially if you're working in the same color, it's pretty forgiving. As for this part, I'm just going to go, you know, stick my hook like maybe here and just push it all the way through to this side, pull it through, and then stick it back through. Since it is the same color, you might have to work a little bit more invisibly if it's not, but I'm not too worried about it. Pull it through, and then push it back. And we're back on this side. We're gonna keep going around this edge. better to be more secure than less secure, so feel free to take your time on this part and do too many stitches because it's worth it more than ripping your bag or the strap off your bag. So take your time. But just like that, we've already sewn on this half of the strap, so we'll go ahead and grab a, another piece and just knot it off like this. Let me pull it almost through put the needle through the loop, tighten it, and then just kind of weave it in like that maybe, and pull it through. Then we'll cut it off and do the other end of the strap similarly, but we're just going to again kind of trace this strap and really make sure that we don't get a twist in there. So like this is how it should look. And then we simply hold it down and repeat that exact way that we just did that half. Go around like a box and uh, sew it on and then weave in all your ends and we will be done with our bag at that point. So our last little intermission and we'll be back with the finished product. So there we finally have our completed granny square heart tote bag. 
One final note though might be that since this is made of granny squares, obviously there are gaps. So for a bag, I guess it depends what you're using this for. If it's just like a little market bag, then maybe you like it as it is. But if you do want it to keep small things from falling out, you might want to consider sewing like a lining on the inside here. Up to you. I think I'm just going to leave it as is because I am happy with this. But it turns out pretty large, so keep in mind uh, this is about the size that it's going to look like if you do big granny squares like I did. It doesn't even fit on, on the camera here. But with that being said, thank you so much for sticking along on this journey with me. This is a three video process that we've gone through to get this final product but I'm glad I could finally show you how to put all the pieces together into a cute little bag. If you have any recommendations or suggestions for videos that you want to see, please let me know in the comments below. And make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you with my next crochet project. Bye! Oh. <laughs>